This is the most northerly of all the component parts in the property. 764 hectares in area and encompassing a 9 km long industrial landscape through the Ogwen Valley. This slate quarrying landscape was developed directly by its aristocratic owners. It represents the first area of the slate industry of North West Wales, to be extensively capitalised for global markets. In this component part, we see the entire process flow of the industry, from quarry face to export harbour and three contrasting forms of settlement. Elements of this component part comprise Penryn Slate Quarry, Vellinvaud Slate Slab Mills, the Penryn Slate Quarry Railroad and Penryn Slate Quarry Railway, Port Penryn, Munith Llandigai Settlement, Bethesda Village, Penryn Castle and Park. Penryn Castle and Park was the Welsh home of the Penryn family, the aristocratic dynasty that owned and developed this component part, and whose founding wealth came from their sugar-growing estates in Jamaica, worked by enslaved labour. It is one of the most important large country houses in Wales, and is now owned and managed by the National Trust, and open to the public as a visitor attraction. Beyond Penryn is the National Trust's interpretation project for the castle. This is significantly changing the way the castle's history is presented, telling the story of the harsher sides of its industrial and colonial history, and working with the local community to do so. Penryn Castle has become the sector lead in this. <laughs> Since 2018, children from Our Lady's Primary School in Bangor have been coming to the castle as part of the Colonial Countryside Project to look at the castle's collection and its links to colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade. The two quarry settlements in this component part exemplify the social tensions caused by the controlling hand of the Penryn estate a reflection of its use of enslaved labour in the West Indies. Regular planned settlements, with their accompanying land, stylized cottages and houses built by the Penryn estate at Munith Llandigai, contrast with Bethesda village. Initially created on freehold land by independent-minded quarrymen and their families, who preferred not to live on the Penryn estate. Here, the irregular and winding streets and plainer dwellings contrast with the later, more orderly expansion of the village onto Penryn estate land. Bethesda was the focal point of the Penryn Quarry strike between 1900 and 1903, a bitter conflict which is still one of the longest-running labour disputes in the history of the United Kingdom. The strike was a culmination of several years of dissatisfaction and unrest in the Ogwen Valley. It centred on union rights, pay and employment conditions, and was a bitter battle between Lord Penryn, who wanted to eliminate the North Wales Quarrymen's union's influence within the quarry, and amongst the quarry workers. It ripped apart a community, and the effects of the strike are still felt today in Bethesda and the surrounding community. Carchar a chos byr dyn cyffredin, am ddwy na roedd oddi ar y comyn, ond parch a geir ac uchel soedd, am ddwy na'r comyn oddi ar y roedd. The National Trust has been working with the community to interpret its contested past. The strike was one of the topics of the recent Artists in Residence project at Penryn Castle, which helped to rebuild links between the community and the castle. The <laughs> Inflexible, A 
marginal culture that becomes incorporated into the global industrial system often loses its distinct way of life and minority language. This did not happen in the slate landscape of Northwest Wales, which remains strongly Welsh in speech. Powerful traditions of religious descent are evident in numerous chapels located across the property. The chapel is a building which characterises the Welsh landscape and is central to the slate community's vision of themselves, as well as to their values. Church and chapel came to have an uneasy relationship. The Anglican church identified with conservatism, drew its religious authority from tradition and its local influence from powerful land-owning patrons. Chapels, in contrast, identified with the Liberal Party and ultimately the Labour movement. They offered visionary sermons, a ministry drawn from the people themselves and an opportunity to organise and express the community's own values. Across the property, Anglican churches with tall spires contrast with the preaching barn architectural style of the Protestant nonconformist chapels. Bethesda takes its name from the Congregationalist Chapel established there in 1820. It has a number of distinctive chapels, built or remodelled and extended during the religious revivals of the 1850s onwards. These are grander and more ornate than earlier examples and bear witness to the religious commitment of their congregations and to the prioritisation of their surplus wealth. The substantial Calvinistic Methodist Jerusalem was built in 1842 and remodelled between 1872 and 1875 by a local architect, Richard Davis of Carnarvon. It can seat 980 and remains in active use today. As the first area of the slate industry of North West Wales to be extensively capitalised for global markets, this component part demonstrated how quarrying was reorganised by a single, immensely wealthy family. The wealth available is evident in the scale and form of the quarry workings and through the introduction of innovative methods and technologies, which other slate producing areas in the region sought to emulate. The changes to the landscape began in the last decades of the 18th century and in the early years of the 19th century, when Richard Pennant, Lord Penryn, cancelled the leases held by local partnerships to work scattered and small-scale quarries and initiated systemised operations. His engineers developed a system of regular stepped benches or galleries to work the rock face, with the waste rock tips fed by railway lines. By the early 19th century, this was the largest slate quarry in the world. The quarry led the way in the application of water power and this component part is remarkable for its rare variety of surviving water-driven machinery. At Penryn Quarry, two examples of water balance shafts survive, introduced from the 1840s when the system of inclined planes from the quarry pit was abandoned. As the quarry pit deepened, drainage was required. A 1.9 km long drainage level was cut and a water pressure engine installed to pump the quarry pit in 1872. It is preserved in situ and the drainage level is still in use. Vellinvaud was the site of an innovative slate slab mill of 1802, the earliest known location in the world to have used circular saws to cut stone. Here, water powered the quarry's processing and engineering complex, located at the first location where the railroad from the quarry crosses a stream which could be dammed to turn water wheels. Two 19th century water wheels survive, one powering the slate slab mills and the other the foundry. The Penryn Slate Quarry 0.6 metre gauge iron railroad was the design ancestor of many narrow gauge railways built subsequently. This used horse traction along lightly graded sections and counterbalanced inclined planes to connect the quarry with Port Penryn. It used innovative cast iron edge rails. In the 1870s, Charles Easton Spooner of the Fastiniog Railway designed the steam powered replacement, which operated until 1962. The courses of both railways are relict features. Features include impressive retaining walls, an early railway viaduct, and a remarkable intact inclined plain winding house, among the earliest upstanding railway structures in the world. 
parts of both routes are incorporated into the Lawn Lass Ogwen Cycle Route and the 133 km long Snowdonia Slate Trail, which explores the slate heritage of the property. Port Penryn on the Menai Strait was the main shipping point for Penryn Slate from the late 18th century to the mid 20th and remains in use as a commercial harbour which still occasionally exports crushed slate. Penryn Quarry remains in active production outside of the property within the wider protected area. It is one of the few remaining quarries within the slate industry of North Wales, where traditional techniques of extracting rock and splitting blocks are still carried out on an industrial scale. Bethesda is still a living, vibrant community, where Welsh is the first language of around 70% of the population. Here, musicians, poets, authors and artists find inspiration in this remarkable community. In the words of the local Prifarth, a winner of the chair of the National Eisteddfod. My hen gov a mine gavail, a hen fydd ar graig ddifail. <laughs>